<laughs> Hello, and what's your name, sorry? My name is Brenda. Hello. So, the guys tell me that you've got some, um, some bobs to say about the hair. Well, here, yeah, uh, you know, going up during the war, which is one thing. Yeah. And when it was <clears throat> from the age of nine of the days when war was declared up until the end of 1945. And um, experience we had during that time was such so that <clears throat> youngsters were all involved in collecting salvage from people. They, they deal gates, collecting toys to make sure for saving, saving for a spitfire. That was the thing. And uh, another thing which people don't realise, that in most of the streets there was a fire warden. He was the senior warden who had a telephone. He was the only one who had a telephone. Yeah. And we, as young lads, we were all wanting to do our bit. We became the messenger boys. Okay. And we would run from the warden's post, if they had a message, run like the Dickens to another warden's post with a note on the message. Hand it over to him. You would read it. Then he would write the note, hand it to us, take back to the other place, to the other warden. And that was uh, our claim to claim. We used to become the warden's messenger boys. Oh, nice. And we would do a fair bit of them because we knew where the warden posts were because they were, they were spread out. Mm -hmm. And that was our sort of uh, used to work. And I grew up in Morriston. We did have, during the Blitz, we did have several um, bombs dropping around the area mm -hmm. and I re remember one that I was going to do some shopping for my mother early in the morning before going to school so I dashed around into Woodfield Street in Morriston and one of the other young lads said to me have you seen Lee Road School and they said what's the matter with it it's a bomb dropped on it so I was going straight looking for the shopping Last round had a look at the school, the classroom, and the, it hadn't been a big bomb, but it was enough to do damage to the classroom and the room. Yeah. So, after having a look there, but rush back, go to where they had the shopping, back home, and then run like the dick in to get into school. But um, that was the thing, you accepted that everybody, when the bombs fell over Swansea, they, they had stopped the trams at the time, so he was able to catch a bus and go down so far into Swansea and then walked around to see the damage that was in the centre of the city. And then walked back and catch a bus then to get so <laughs> yeah. far home. And we did see um, several places where the, where the bombs had fallen in Swansea. Tyler Crescent up in Tower Hill, for example. Yeah. That was a bad place. And there was another one up in, a bomb landed on a house in Trabourg. So, it... Grew, as people hadn't been in contact of war before, yeah. it was essential for them to go and have a look to see what bomb damage was like. Yeah. And then, of course, you weren't around to have any cameras, there's very few people had cameras to record them. But that was the, the interesting thing, visiting these places and having an insight to what bomb damage was, and especially in the centre of the city. And then when the um, Americans came yeah. into Swansea and they were on the foreshore down along Mumbles Road, and they happened to be up near a park where I used to we used to go playing up there and they, they were up on this specially built camp for them and I got to know a number of them in one, one hut and I used to go up there then purely to have the goodies <laughs> and, the, and the American comics 
and I went with it, and it was good. And there was one teacher person there from Philadelphia, and his name, I guess this was Phillips or something, similar Phillips. And um, he always used to shout when I came in, if they were going to be swearing, the boys are. <laughs> and he stopped swearing. Yeah. But then there'd be the other conversation going around about where, where your dad, what is this, that yeah. and the other. And then I'd come away then with some chocolate and some other tins and stuff. So it was all right for the fa extra goodies for the family. Yeah. I was only going up there, well, you know, once a, once a week. You know. It was something, didn't think it was right going up there every day, yeah. scrounging. Yeah. But purely going up there once a week, once over there. Yeah. And I went up there on my normal day in the week. And the camp was empty. And this was then 1944. And the Utley was around here. And, and they were all yeah. down on the boats, mm. down in Swansea docks. Because Swan, Swansea Bay at the time was filled with all types of ships. Yeah. And they were going up and then uh, being taken on board the ship and then going up to the south coast. And how old were you then, sorry? Uh, then I was 14 years of age. But um, I can not say, as a youngster, you, as a youngster, you played games, cowboys and Indians. And then when the war came, you played Japanese <laughs> and Germans. Yeah. And I've got to say this, I'll be all up. There used to be steelworks in, in Morriston and they had scrap weapons, rifles and stem guns with the butts burnt off and the stem guns partly broken. So the boys, youngsters that I used to play with <laughs> were the first, not dad's army, but Ted's army, yeah. who used to go playing around with a rifle yeah. and also with a stallion. So to us, it was like playing war. Now, that's, you know, that, that's how you were. You had no regard except because you only had radio and the newspapers. So really, what was happening elsewhere in the, um, the world where they, were, where they were fighting, it didn't, didn't get, didn't hit home to you, yeah. except you were thinking about your relatives who were all involved in all. One was flying lank with other uh, flight engineer on the Lancaster bombers, and he went several times over to Berlin. And actually, he came through the war. Two others, one was in the both in the navy, one in submarines, yeah. one on aircraft carriers, another one in the uh, in the regiment, powder troop regiment, and another one was fighting out in Burma. So the family really were divided in the different theatres of war. Well, but, um, I, I can say I am fortunate that I am still capable of remembering. Yeah about you know my youth yeah. and what what time of what events were taking place at the time. Yeah. So, Did you spend much time around Bridge End and this local side of it or was it mainly like Swansea Bay? The, well, no, mostly Swansea Bay. Mostly Swansea Bay, yeah. The only thing I got with Bridge End was when the pris Italian prisoners of war camp mm -hmm. where there is I think a building or one or two buildings still standing. And the only thing I've got of that is an Italian prisoner or prisoners made a knife out of aluminium. And on that, he put down who he was and what the Italian regiment he was in. And another one built a little model of a ship. Slightly disproportional, but on the other hand, it's a model yeah. <laughs> it's somebody else. And that's come from back then? And that's from that, that period then. Wow. It's, um, I regard myself as fortunate to have lived through those periods. And of course, done, carried out my national service, yeah. which turned out to be enjoyable. And uh, 
Anything else? Yeah. No, uh, yeah, honestly, it's been wonderful to hear. Absolutely wonderful to hear. I think we, with Hope Nine and just in general, we like the fact that even though, yes, okay, it's here, there's so much out there. And as you said, like with the, 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 the Italian side of it, um, it's fascinating. Completely fascinating. You know, the youngsters of my age group, boys and girls, we went through a great deal. Yeah. Not knowing about when the relatives were coming back. Now my father, for example, because he had three children, he wasn't called up, but he was in the home guard. Yeah. And of course, as the answer, we were dressed up in his uniform. And when we were playing with his rifle, he had his rifle then, I was clobbering my younger brother <laughs> by turning around and hit him in the shoulder or hitting him in the head. So you can imagine what happened. Yeah. And um, he, like a number of men in Morriston at the time who hadn't been called up, were then called up to work in the, in the factories yeah. up in Birmingham. Yeah. And the first factory that he worked in for six months was an explosive factory. Oh, no. Which fortunately didn't go, didn't yeah. go bad. Yeah. And then he worked with one of the big tyre companies, mm -hmm. which were making tyres for the, for the bombers. So, you know, my father was coming home once every six weeks or two months, and that was it. Damn sight better, and of course, yeah. like the other the soldiers, didn't yeah. come over at all. Right, is, is that? Is there anything that you would like to add into this? Uh, no, it's just, you see, the reason, the reason we do it, Thank you for your time.